That's right. And and any any normal time zone collaboration can only you know get two patches. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Cody. Good to see you. Hello. Okay, should we get going? We've got a, a good number of people arriving here. Um, so welcome everybody to the second day of, uh, of String Data 2021. Um, it was a, a fantastic day yesterday, lots of great talks. Um, it looks like there's a very exciting lineup today. Um, as the mantra goes these days, we're sorry that you can't be here in South Africa at the moment, um, but, uh, but hopefully uh, hopefully next time you'll have a, a chance to come. Um, so the first talk of today um, is Koji Hashimoto, who will be talking about deep learning and holographic QCD. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Koji uh, from Kyoto Connecting. Uh, so first I'd like to thank all the organizers and also the uh, supervising committee members and also the participants for giving me this uh, chance to talk about my recent progress on using uh, deep learning for holographic QCD. So uh, my talk is based on uh, these papers in, and in particular, I'd like to report on this uh, recent paper, uh, uh, which I published with uh, uh, Keisuke Ohashi and uh, my student, uh, Taka Sumimoto. So this is, uh, in fact, uh, to get the uh, bulk side starting from QFT uh, under the assumption of ADS-CFT correspondence. So normally, as you know, uh, this correspondence is uh, uh, very difficult to prove and also uh, to, to give a concrete uh, pair uh, it's already very difficult. So if you start from string theory, then uh, using compactification and D-brains, you can find pairs uh, for QFT and ADS. However, without using string theory, it's very difficult. And so uh, uh, my, my trial, uh, which has been already for uh, like three or four years, uh, is to get the insight of this uh, bulk uh, geometry and gravity system uh, starting from QFT. Uh, using deep learning and uh, so now uh, it's 11 p.m in japan and so uh, i'm uh, kind of uh, in a midnight tension very high tension <laughs> but giving this talk so if you have any question please stop me so uh, because of this time zone difference our activity in japan is uh, kind of separated but we uh, uh, we have uh, this series of uh, deep learning and physics online seminars, mostly in Japanese, but uh, we invited, uh, for example, Jim to speak uh, in this series uh, once. And we have 1,000 uh, uh, registrants uh, for these online seminars, and we are quite act doing act active. So hopefully in the near future, we uh, get united again after Corona. So let me start my talk. So uh, using my uh, 20 or 15 minutes, I'd like to uh, talk about how a gravity action can be constructed from QFT data. So uh, you may remember my talk in past uh, string data conference uh, in which I talked about how the geometry itself in the bulk uh, can be reconstructed from uh, QCD data. So uh, I'd like to review that part first. And then uh, using this uh, reconstructed geometry, I'd like to reconstruct the gravity action itself. So once action is given in the gravity side, then you have a full power of using gravity, like solving this uh, Einstein equations in the gravity to get another solution to give another QFT data from gravity, something like that. So uh, what I do is using QC data to first reconstruct the bulk geometry, and then using this bulk geometry, I get bulk gravity action. So that's the final goal of my project. And I completed it for uh, certain examples. So first I'd like to uh, explain why and how I do that. And then in second uh, section, I will speak about uh, the, uh, part of uh, review of my uh, uh, past work on uh, space-time geometry emerging from data. And then in section three, 
I report on how gravity action can be uh, reconstructed. And then using this uh, reconstructed action of the gravity, I solve it uh, to give uh, some other uh, uh, QCD uh, predictions and compare them with uh, QCD lattice data. So that's the goal. So let me start what we have with uh, section one, why and how. So in ADS safety correspondence, you can uh, actually recast the classical gravity theory into the quantum field theory observables, or uh, hopefully vice versa. But uh, normally it's very difficult to get uh, gravity side from QCD or QFT. So what we do is uh, to start from classical gravity in higher dimensions, and then uh, consider that as an effective theory of gravity and effective low energy theory of QCD. And then using, using ADSFT uh, dictionary, you get uh, QCD observables from gravity. So this is the conventional modeling. The target is some quantum field theory like uh, QCD, and you have lattice or experimental data. On the other hand, you model, uh, you want to model this by gravity. So if you start from gravity, of course you need an action uh, like Einstein plus Dilaton plus uh, arbitrary Dilaton potential. So that could be your action. And with uh, a good choice of action, uh, you have a good model, but a good modeling. But uh, if you have a bad action, then it's a bad modeling. So nobody knows uh, before you compute everything starting from your action. So once you solve the equation of motion, you get a metric. And then uh, from this metric, you, you can compute predictions to this QCD and you can compare them. But this is not efficient, as I always say, because uh, this is kind of top-down approach and you need to uh, start with some good action of gravity, but uh, nobody knows what is the good action. It could be just Einstein plus uh, normal Dilaton coupling, but uh, only with that, unfortunately, it does not give you a good action. Uh, so you need to engineer, for example, uh, the Dilaton potential uh, for this gravity model. And if once you get, uh, once you start with a good Dilaton potential, then you have a good model. So something like that. And uh, uh, in history, for example, uh, Gapsa uh, uh, found, found out a very good uh, Dilaton potential, phenomenological Dilaton potential uh, as a gravity model. And that's a very good model because it reproduced uh, many QCD observables. So in, uh, in history, many people tried to get a uh, good action. So one of them is this Gabsa's action. The bulk reconstruction program, which is now very popular in the ADS safety correspondence, uh, goes backwards. So starting from QFT, you prepare many experimental data and lattice data. And then uh, to get the gravity model, you don't start with the action, but you get the metric from QCD data. Then from metric, uh, you can actually construct action backwards because metric is the solution of the equation of motion from this action. So this backward transformation to get action uh, can be done once the metric is given. And from this action and metric, uh, you can give uh, another prediction and you can compare them with experimental data. So this is more efficient in ADS safety correspondence if you want to model uh, non-QFT like QCD. So uh, let me try this bulk reconstruction. The uh, section two is to get this metric and section three is to get action and then give predictions. So let us uh, let me give a review of my uh, the series of my papers on the bulk reconstruction of geometry from QCD data. The uh, top uh, trick is very simple. Uh, what I have done is to recast uh, this uh, bulk uh, boundary correspondence in ADS-CFT to uh, a deep neural network. So as you know, uh, in ADS-CFT correspondence, uh, if you have uh, some uh, unknown five-dimensional uh, theory, and then, uh, start, uh, sorry, uh, if you have a, a five-dimensional theory, then you solve the equation of motion in this five-dimensional geometry uh, to find out solutions. And those solutions are, for example, a metric and blah, blah, blah. And if you look at the boundary part of this uh, geometry, 
then this boundary part actually encodes the information of boundary quantum field theory. So a quantum field theory gives you a boundary condition and geometry is given by the equation of motion in the bulk. So this kind of uh, picture uh, can be really nicely fit into the form of neural network. Since in the neural network, you have uh, deep layers and you, you put the uh, uh, input data, which is a boundary condition of this new deep neural network and propagation of data goes from input to output. So uh, ADS-CFT actually do the same thing. So uh, uh, the bulk equation motion uh, can be recast into the form of neural network propagation and the boundary data, QFT data can be recast into the form of uh, uh, input data of neural network. So this kind of uh, geometry correspondence, a geometry neural network correspondence can be really uh, made explicit and I can use uh, this uh, technique. So uh, one example is this, uh, uh, for example, scalar equation in five dimensions and the equation of motion uh, is uh, actually uh, given uh, from this uh, Euler-Lagrange equation from this action. And the uh, unknown part is this uh, metric which uh, will be bulk uh, reconstructed. So I skipped the details, but uh, uh, this uh, uh, one-dimensional ordinary differ differential equation can be recast into the form of uh, discretized uh, sequenced uh, neural network uh, propagation of data. And the boundary condition is given by the QFT data. And the geometry is uh, actually uh, written as the uh, weight of this neural network. So uh, if you train this uh, uh, neural network for given uh, QFT data of QCD and the black hole boundary condition here, then uh, you can get the, uh, these weights uh, weights to be determined. And then uh, these weights are uh, uh, understood as a metric in the bulk. So this is how the metric in the bulk can be reconstructed by using this very special uh, use of a deep neural network. So this is interpretable neural network. And uh, the interpretation is that uh, it's actually a geometry. So the data which I use uh, is uh, two folds. So one is a chiral condensate as a function of coke mass, and the other is a Romeson mass spectrum. So we can use these uh, QC, many kinds of QCD data to uh, determine the bulk geometry. Uh, this is one example. This is the uh, coke mass versus the chiral condensate, and the blue dots are the positive data, and the orange dots are fake data. And to reproduce this thing uh, by using the neural network, you can train the neural network and you can get the bulk geometry. So on your right hand side, you have the bulk geometry. So this one, uh, where the eta direction is the radial direction of ADS. And finally, you get some smooth function like this. And this is the geometry. And also uh, you can actually get uh, some other parameters uh, uh, of the bulk, uh, which can be determined by deep. Uh, the other uh, training uh, uh, can be done with, uh, for example, hadron spectrum. So if you prepare the hadron spectrum, like a uh, raw meson mass, so this is uh, the ground state, so a uh, lowest uh, raw meson mass. This is the excited raw meson mass. And you have a sequence of this data in particular data group book. And uh, to reproduce uh, these uh, data, uh, the metric, uh, needs to be reconstructed. And by using a similar technique, the bulk geometry uh, and the equation motion can be recast into the deep learning form. And then uh, you get the bulk geometry, uh, which reproduces uh, this uh, uh, hadron spectra. So uh, another hadron spectra of raw mesons uh, can act actually determine these uh, parameters in the uh, metric space, uh, something like this. So I, I don't talk about this uh, in detail, but uh, the point is that uh, uh, by using the uh, similarity between the deep, deep, deep neural network and bulk uh, equation of motion, uh, you can map uh, the deep learning uh, protocol to this ADS safety setup. And then uh, using the QCD data, data uh, you can reconstruct the bulk geometry. 
So uh, this is a very brief review of what I have done in past uh, three years. And now the point is that uh, as a result, uh, I can get the geometry uh, from QCD data by using deep learning. The next task is to uh, find the gravity action uh, starting from this. Okay. So let me uh, talk about that. So in this figure, I uh, draw the uh, uh, outline of how I get the prediction from my model. So I start with uh, uh, two kinds of QCD data. Here, uh, you have the hadron spectrum, like raw meson spectrum. And starting from this raw meson spectrum, uh, you can actually get the metric from this by using deep learning. So this is one line. The other thing is that uh, if I use some other observable like chiral condensate, then from that only, as a, uh, as a dependence of quark mass, uh, this data can reconstruct a bulk geometry. So this is another metric. Of course, you can uh, actually require the consistency between these two. But unfortunately, I cannot do that uh, because uh, this chiral condensate is the finite temperature data with this meson spectrum is zero temperature data. So, and uh, also uh, for the gravity model, uh, temperature corresponds to the black hole uh, Hawking temperature. So this metric uh, has a black hole. This metric doesn't have a black hole. So I cannot uh, actually equate these two metrics uh, from the first place because data uh, have different temperature values, okay? So I need to choose this one or this one. So uh, let me do one by one. So uh, let me start with one, one of these. So what I do is, for example, if I start with this one, I get a metric. Then I demand that uh, this action as a solution, this. So this means that uh, this action uh, uh, from the first place, this action has an arbitrariness of this uh, Dilaton potential V of phi. So you need to tune this V of phi to, be, uh, to require that uh, this metric is a solution of this action. So in this way, this Dilaton potential can be determined from this metric solution. So once you determine the action, then you can do everything. Uh, for example, you can get uh, black hole solutions, uh, you can do some other uh, computation of ADS-CFT starting from this action, and you can get a uh, prediction to QCD and then compare that with, for example, uh, some other QCD observable such as uh, Q quark and interquark potential. So this is uh, what I want to do. So let me start with uh, meson spectrum or chiral condensate. The data is already given and metrics are uh, uh, already reconstructed by deep learning. So let me start with meson spectrum. So using meson spectrum, I, I determined a metric like this by using deep learning. And then, uh, as I said, requiring that this is a solution of equation of motion of this gravity action, I can determine this V of Y. And the result is uh, numerically uh, given like this. So this is the Dilaton potential as a function of Dilaton. And this uh, blobs are uh, the uh, numerically obtained uh, Dilaton potential. As you see, yeah, it's uh, uh, linearly growing, but this is a uh, uh, log scale plot. So this is exponentially growing. So, and uh, you can actually fit uh, this uh, numerically obtained Dilaton potential uh, by this kind of function, hyperbolic cosine or hyperbolic cosine plus phi squared plus pi, phi to the fourth, uh, as you like. And in fact, uh, this fitting uh, goes very well with uh, this function. And very interestingly, uh, this uh, Dilaton potential was quite similar to what uh, Gavsan Neroa uh, discovered uh, almost 13 years ago. So this uh, Gavsan Neroa model of uh, holographic QCD worked uh, very, very well somehow. We didn't know why. And uh, this model uh, use a very special Dilaton potential, which is using uh, hyperbolic cosine. And now 
Uh, I don't know why, but the deep learning model uh, found this metric and I uh, reconstructed the bulk action uh, from this metric and I got uh, this potential, which can be very nicely fit with the uh, Gaussian lower model. So I think uh, this is a very good uh, sense of uh, deep learning. So somehow, uh, starting from meson spectrum, I could uh, reproduce this uh, Gaussian lower uh, dilaton potential. So now this action is uh, determined. Uh, I can see uh, various checks about this action. Uh, for example, this dilaton potential has exponential growth at a, a large dilaton potential. And this exponent uh, can be fit uh, by this function, uh, exponential of uh, dilaton times uh, some power function. And this P and the Q are very you important. Have about, you have about five minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I will finish in five minutes. So these uh, values of P and Q are phenomenologically uh, important values in holographic QCD community. And this is a plot of this function. So P and, so, uh, P and Q actually depends on the uh, zero uh, value of this uh, dilaton potential. And this is an arbitrary constant. So I change this uh, arbitrary constant little by little, and then fit uh, this dilaton potential by this uh, uh, form. And the final, uh, fitting a P and value of P and Q uh, aligned in this uh, plot. And it is uh, important to note that uh, this plot actually includes P equal one half and Q equal two thirds. And these two values were chosen by uh, Elias Kirichis and his uh, collaborators as a very good values uh, for uh, P and Q. So somehow this deep learning method uh, already knew uh, this very good dilaton potential. Now I can get, uh, compute the prediction. So before uh, computing quark potential, uh, from this action, uh, I can solve the string, st string frame metric and Einstein frame metric. The Einstein frame metric goes like uh, these orange dots. String frame metric at zero temperature. Uh, on the other hand, it uh, goes up. So, so here is the ADS geometry. But uh, uh, you can notice that in string frame metric, uh, if you go to infrared, uh, this uh, metric, zero, zero component of the metric goes up. So this means that there is a bottom of the geometry here, and that uh, this is called confining geometry. So confining geometry is automatically reproduced uh, in this model. And using this uh, uh, confining geometry, uh, you can compute quark potential as a function of intercoag distance. And you can see that the linear behavior is reproduced. And also, uh, string breaking distance is 0 0.5 femtometer. So this is quite in accordance with the lattice QCD result of uh, quark, uh, intercoag uh, string breaking, breaking distance. So another uh, uh, starting point is chiral condensate. So we can do the very similar thing. From uh, starting from chiral condensate, I get metric, and from that, I get dilaton potential. So this is a form of dilaton potential. So anyway, using this dilaton potential, uh, I can compute uh, some predictions. So this uh, is about, again, a quark potential. This is a lattice QCD result for the quark potential. Uh, the quark potential is a, a function of uh, distance between quarks for different temperatures. And this chiral condensate data is about 200 MeV temperature. So it's like uh, this uh, uh, blue triangle plot. So it's given by here. So this lattice result, uh, whether it can be reproduced by my model or not, it's very interesting. And here I draw my result on top of lattice result. So these uh, uh, red curves uh, my result starting from this model, uh, where the dilaton potential was reconstructed from deep learning. And you can see that uh, they overlap quite nicely, uh, including the uh, string breaking distance. So in this way, uh, somehow uh, this uh, deep learning method works very well uh, for determining the geometry and also uh, gravity model itself. And once model is determined, then you can compute many things uh, of uh, holographic QCD. So this is the end of my talk. So uh, 
Finally, uh, I completed my project for uh, which started four years ago. I wanted to use uh, deep learning to uh, reconstruct the gravity action itself. And now uh, I got it and I, um, I have that in my hand. So uh, we can use uh, deep learning for more uh, QCD data and we can get better uh, gravity action starting from data. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Koji, for a fascinating talk. Um, are there any questions? We have a, a few minutes. Um, Fabian, I think, um, is up first. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Koji. Hi, Koji. Um, very nice talk. Thank you very much. Um, can you go back to slide 16? Or I can also just ask. So when you got the result of the dilaton profile and you obtained the cosh or um, reproduced the result of Kupsa et al., also of Kuritsis, uh, did you sort of know that you wanted to reproduce this and just try to fit a cosh, or did you use some uh, some analytic fitting algorithm that actually tell, told you it was a cosh that fitted best? Um, so actually, I didn't know uh, this uh, Gaussian error model <laughs> before. <laughs> Yeah, my student found out that, that this is a good model, but uh, kind of buried in history. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it was very surprised, uh, kind of surprised. So we, so since this is exponentially growing, mm -hmm. so I first uh, fit with just exponential function plus mm -hmm. some power to reproduce this uh, detailed structure at the bottom. And then uh, my student told me that uh, since uh, here uh, it's kind of flat, so you better use a hyperbolic cosine. So I agreed, and then that this was uh, just a fit. Okay. And then after that, we looked at the references, and then Gaussian Nero actually used a uh, hyperbolic cosine potential, and I was very surprised. And uh, this this uh, lower one was actually used by Gaussian Nero by uh, improving this one by adding some uh, power functions. So something like that. I see. Interesting. I mean, there are also these programs like. Uh... Feynman AI or also Mathematica uses some, some machine learning algorithm to find a fit. So they have a bunch of functions built in, like power functions, but also cosh and so on. So the question would have been, could you have found this just by trying to fit any function basis without sort of having a student that proposes <laughs> that <laughs> would be a cosh? Um, yeah, what uh, I did uh, for other answers was that uh, it's so, so this is a log scale plot. So I just use uh, uh, exponential of some uh, polynomial. And mm -hmm. it also, also, of course, fit uh, very well. Yeah, okay. uh, so yeah, uh, around here was just an uh, uh, expansion of the, this exponential for smaller power of phi. So anyway, you can have. So the importance of these uh, correction is that actually with using uh, these corrections, uh, you can avoid uh, so-called BF bound for Dilaton fluctuation. So uh, in that sense, this uh, potential is better one. Also uh, looks ugly, but yeah. Thank you very much, very cool. Thank you. We have time maybe for one, one more quick question, if there are any. Uh, Alkia, yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, that's a very nice talk, by the way. So, uh, uh, so I'm just probably a very nice question. So, your uh, the whole gravity action thing, this correspondence, technically they just work for uh, large n limit, right? So, in your case, your training is still on uh, QCD in some sense. So, uh, how do you explain that part here? Uh, that's a great question. So, in fact, uh, uh, this is the uh, big motivation for my work. So normally ADSCFT works for a large end limit, but uh, I want to model QCD itself where uh, MC is three. And so uh, there should be some big correction. Uh, so uh, some very bad things uh, should appear uh, if ADSCFT works only at large end. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I see here is that uh, even, for, uh, even if I use uh, QCD data, it actually uh, gives me a very good uh, Lagrangian, uh, which can reproduce many data of QCD. So this means that uh, ADS-CFT, already we knew that it's, uh, it works for large N. MC is equal to three is a very good approximation of large N. Okay, 
Sure. Thank you very much. Um, Jim, I think we might have to wait uh, for the discussion, if that's OK. Um, thank you very much again, Koji, for a fantastic talk. Thank you very um, much.